be seated. Is it working? Good afternoon. Bonjour, vous m'entendez? Sit down, please. We are going to start the meeting. Is uh, Lois and uh, Asna around here? Oh, you are? Lois. Where is Asna? Yes, they are not takers from Uganda. And the rapporteur is Lilian Nalwoga. I wanted to identify you. Be, please collect the uh, present uh, sheet, the attendance sheet, please, for the report. Okay, All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's uh, welcome to the uh, African Union Open Forum. Uh, it's nice to see uh, many familiar faces here in the room. Uh, this is uh, a forum for reflection and uh, a kind of uh, a retreat where we can see. Uh, uh, examine uh, what works, what doesn't work, and uh, learn uh, from the experience, and share uh, best practices. Uh, and uh, also, uh, it's, a, it's a platform that we can uh, tell you what is happening in the, uh, on the continent in terms of new initiative uh, in this space. Uh, I think we have technical issue but we can start uh, let me go through the agenda and then we will start uh, we will have the opening by uh, dr jamal amin uh, the chair of the african igf so we had the IG, african igf uh, which uh, we hosted in sudan so it's, uh, sudan is the chair and who is going to give a, a, a deliver a summary report on the what happened in sudan uh, next uh, speaker we're going to uh, mr Mukhtar Adal is going to talk about the initiatives, AU initiatives uh, in the space. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, hosting and the issue we're facing uh, uh, with hosting uh, the African IGF in general. And then we are going to give some news about the African IGF MAG and uh, the member of the MAG. You, you'll be familiar with uh, the members of, of IGF MAG. And then we close with uh, a set of uh, question and answers, and hopefully we have enough time for uh, Q&A sessions. Uh, without uh, further ado, uh, I will pass the mic to, to our chair <coughs> to give us uh, a summary report of the proceeding uh, in Sudan. Thank you. No technician? Okay, thank you, Dr. Adel. Great honor to chairing the African Internet Governance Forum. Uh, most welcome and appreciation for attending this forum. Unfortunately, I have a presentation here, but the technician is not around. For uh, but because I have only 10 minutes. I have to start without a presentation where this presentation includes some galleries of photos and videos. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We will uh, I will conduct a report about the 7th African Internet Governance Forum uh, that had been held in Sudan, Khartoum at Corancia Hotel from 4 to 6 November 2018. The objectives of the African IGF yes, is a platform for an inclusive, multilateral, multi-stakeholder, a multi lingual discussion in issues concern the internet in Africa as general and internet governance issues in particular. 
participation of the Sevens Forum. This year, African IGF was held from 4 to 6 November 2018 in Khartoum, Sudan, under the theme Development of the Digital Economy and Emerging Technologies in Africa, with the participation of over 340 participants from 26 countries. In addition, to almost all multi-stakeholders had been attended. Okay. The seventh African IGF proceeded by IGF National Day for Sudan at November 1st of 20, uh, 2018 that had conducted five sessions of 11 presentation which attended by 193 participants of different stakeholders. Yeah. Okay. Sessions, there were keynote speech, 11, uh, 11 plenary and eight parallel sessions as well as continual remote participation. The plenary session were induction for newcomers, national and regional initiatives, round table on unlocking the development of digital economy and emerging technologies in Africa, Africa's digital economy for access and infrastructure as fundamental for digital economic growth, empowering digital cooperation towards build, building trust, emerging technologies, part one, for Internet of Things and big data, emerging technologies, part two, for artificial intelligence and blockchain. Number, se number seven, the digital economy and attainment of SDGs and AU agenda. Then announcement, announcement of African IGF MAG members Finally, status and recommendation of I, uh, African IGF 2017 and presentation of the recommendation. The parallel session were non-discriminatory internet access, community network, connecting the un unconnected, African court for online conflict resolution, human rights for child protection and use rights, internet shutdowns, then African internet institutions, finally cyber security enhancement for the use and harnessing of ICT. Major deliverables. Okay. The major highlights of the conference were adoption of the recommendations in relating to the UN Secretary General's high-level panel on digital cooperation, HLPDC, after having noted that H HLBDC wasn't inclusive and balanced. The African IGF particip uh, participants recommended that Number one, there was need for HLDPC to take history into context and benefit from best practices. Number two, HLDPC should hold proper consultations with Africa while the African Union would put in place and coordinate a mechanism where African countries would prepare their agreed positions for submission to the, to the HLDPC and this will strengthen the efforts of the two African members of the panel to make a strong African contribution taking into account diversity of Africa. Number three, call for active participation of African in the UN high level panel on digital cooperation. Call for African Union Commission to closely work with the panel to organize a multi sectoral and multi-stakeholder conference on digital cooperation. Moreover, information is available at the website. The third 
major highlight is hiring the crucial need for regulating, managing, and governing OTTs. The fourth one is uh, to set a minimum level of harmonized policies towards African internet governance. The last delivered combating, deliverable, uh, sorry, combating and non-discriminatory access to internet resources. resources. These are some photo galleries for the event. This is the MAC election. And we have a small video show. It's not working. Okay, by the way, we have two video shows, one for the national TV for, uh, that covering the event, and the other one for the ministerial dinner invitation and its party. And finally, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jamal. Uh, uh, we want to apologize for, because the room is small, I think we have people who could not get in the room because of security reasons. Um, uh, next, uh, we will have uh, Mr. Yadali, who is going to tell us uh, and give us uh, a briefing on the uh, AU initiative in the cyberspace uh, and uh, what we are doing uh, in that regard. <coughs> Okay, my, my name is Mokhtar Yedali. I'm the head of the Information Society within the African Union Commission. And it's uh, an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, Gamal, for the exhaustive report on uh, the outcome of the African IGF. Thank you, the Secretariat, Secretariat Makan, uh, Adil, and uh, everybody who contributed to uh, the successful organization of the African Internet Governance Forum in, uh, in Sudan. Uh, I will not be long. Uh, I have three points to update you on. One is to inform you again that the uh, internet governance, the declaration on internet governance and uh, development of digital economy that we have built from bottom uh, up has been approved by the head of state. So we have now that as a document, as a reference for uh, all our general principles. Uh, second, we would like to inform you that we also have started the program that we've been negotiating for the last three years on uh, building capacity for the uh, African member states, which is actually PREDA. It will has two components. The component number one is related to the internet governance. And Kofi, will you stand up? Kofi will be the lead uh, team on this matter. I know you have seen him from uh, a previous activity on uh, People that haven't seen you, can you stand up again so they can see you very well? Can you please wave to the people? Turn, turn your face, please, behind. Okay, okay. So they know you. This is the man that will be harassing for matters related to IG at the national, regional, and continental level. So the, uh, the component related to uh, uh, IG, uh, our objective is uh, to train as much as possible people. Uh, within at the national level in all African uh, countries uh, from all um, sectors and from all um, stakeholders uh, and enhance or create or reinforce the National Internet Governance Forum if it, is, it doesn't exist and specifically leave behind us some kind of institution that will be continue uh, cont will be continuing the work on uh, the uh, capacity building on IG. So everybody, and uh, we, this is a call I make to everybody, every one of you is kindly requested to really um, contribute to the implementation of this project. We cannot make it happen without you. So that we, we have hired new people. Uh, we have two people, uh, uh, actually three people in the office now. Uh, Kofi is among one of them. 
and we plan to have two or more people to make sure that we'll be doing all uh, this work together. Time to time, we will be calling for consultancy here and there to make sure that within the next two years we achieve and complete, complete this program. Uh, at, uh, currently, we are working on the content, the curricula that is being prepared. We are identifying the trainers uh, everywhere, and uh, soon some of you will be contacted for uh, a specific contribution on this matter. So the person to be harassed is uh, uh, Kofi and then Adil, and please don't harass me. So that's, that's what I wanted to say with regard to the component related to the internal governance. Then we do have something also bigger. We are creating a digital platform for our cooperation. The digital platform will be a place where all policy and regulation of the continent will be there. So it will be one-stop shopping for anybody who wanted anything related to our policy and regulation. Second, it will be the tool for harmonization. Uh, and then it will be a platform for us to coordinate our position discussing had our trainings and really create what we call the uh, uh, African uh, ICT communities uh, to contribute around the world. And uh, uh, th the, there is another team that is actually dealing with that. Uh, so they are actually currently working on, uh, uh, we we'll made the launch two weeks ago and currently they are probably also starting the work and we hope that within the next two years also they will be finishing. We are now entering into a phase two of negotiation of after these two projects, what's going to happen. Uh, willingness is there, partners are willing to fund. Uh, this, mind you, the project that are starting now is five million euro, uh, funded by the European Union mainly. And uh, there is another five million euro, which is actually related to the spectrum specifically that we are implementing with ITU. So all those things are uh, in line with what you have requested everywhere in during your meetings and IGFs and uh, mailing and addresses and individual contribution. We have taken that all into consideration to make sure that we'll be uh, meeting your requirement. So this is all I wanted to say at this point of time and I will be glad to answer to any specific question you'll be asking. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Mukhtar, for this briefing. Uh, we now are going to speak about the African IGF, the organization of the African IGF. And I think I forgot one white item. Okay. I forgot one item. Well, uh, one of the requests was is of, with regard to the, uh, the committee, the advisory committee on cybersecurity. So we have received so far uh, 165 CVs, among them only 12 women which is actually roughly 7 to 8 percent of the whole things. We are um, uh, thriving to parity, uh, so there will be 10 only selected among the 167. Uh, and we hope that by uh, December, the first meeting of this committee will take place. So that's an item I wanted to ask. Sorry again. No problem. I think this is the uh, expert group on cybersecurity that is going to advise the African Union Commission on issues related to the cyber security. All right, so I, I, let me pass uh, the mic to Dr. Jamal to continue the proceeding of the meeting. Okay, thank you very much. I will continue steering the session. The next session with Dr. Adil to speak about hosting African IGF process. You have five minutes. Okay, doctor, you can proceed. So sorry. I'll, I, I'll try to be brief, but this is, I think, this is kind of the reflection part of the, of this meeting, where we talk about what went wrong and uh, what <coughs> went well, and try to see what, to get some guidance from you guys, as the, the best way forward. Uh, in the participation, we always try to be inclusive. Uh, we take into account uh, regional and gender, and also we try to include youth as much as possible. Uh, the, uh, so one of the issues that we've been facing since uh, the meeting in South Africa is, the, is to do with visa, visas. And I think people, 
usually African, they take for granted this issue, the visa issue. And most of the time we end up, we end up uh, issuing tickets for people who don't have visa. And then we try to scramble at the last minute to see if we can secure visa on arrival. Uh, so please, uh, Sudan was very helpful in with regard to the visa on arrival, but I, we, don't, we should not expect that in, in all countries. We have a lot of difficulties in South Africa. We have some difficulties in Egypt. But please, please uh, take the visa issue seriously. Uh, on hosting, usually the process that we follow, we have a bidding process, usually, and then we receive uh, some uh, feedback from uh, countries, and uh, we go through the evaluation, and we will uh, we announce uh, the, the 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 winner. Usually, this is a very lengthy process. Uh, we are trying to be predictable in this process, but it's very difficult because, like for instance, in Sudan we had a cabinet change, and then we had to wait for almost one month. So this is a very difficult, we were dealing with a minister, and then we were going very smooth, the process was going smooth, and then boom, we have a cabinet change. And that uh, complicated the, the problem. Uh, in Egypt, for also for, for example, before the meeting, there was a terrorist attack. And then for two, three weeks, things were not moving as we expected. So. Unfortunately, there are factors that are beyond our control, but we are trying to, to, uh, uh, to be as, mu as much as predictable as we can. On the budget, uh, most, uh, the bulk of the budget is from the African Union Commission and the host country. And we are, we are relying also on some partners. I think we have uh, uh, very faithful partners in ICANN, ISOC, AFRINIC, APC, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Facebook, Facebook, AFRALO, uh, IGFSA, IGFSA, and so forth. So I think I'm looking at Nene. So you guys have to step up. Yeah, you have to step up. Yes, and Google also, they have to step up as well. Uh, what we need from partners, we don't need money. If they can send people to the event, we will be very happy. Just give them ticket, give them accommodation, we will be happy. And, and then you're going to be recognized as such. Uh, because the AU, uh, you know, the AU uh, budget is the process is very complicated. We don't accept money most of the time. Usually just bring people to the event and we want to see more people contributing. Uh, in terms of the expected outcome, uh, yes, you know, on the, in the opening of, uh, the, of the IGF, we heard a lot about we need to see concrete proposals and, and, and so forth. I think in, in the, with regard to the African IGF, I think we are ahead of the curve. We are, we are taking the recommendation from the African IGF very seriously, and we are funneling this, those recommendations to the AU process. And you see a lot of product uh, like the declaration on, uh, and on the declaration on the, um, the AU declaration on IG and the development of digital economy. This was a bottom-up uh, process. We went through the AU organs. Uh, first of all, it was developed by the community. It went to the AU organs, it was, and it was uh, adopted by the head of the states. So we are trying to take on the cybersecurity also front. We have now the cybersecurity expert. All the discussion that we have during the African IGF, we take seriously and we try to uh, get some concrete uh, proposals and recommendations through AU organs. Uh, 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 the way forward, the next IGF, uh, we, st uh, we are going to uh, send out a bid uh, early next year, and hopefully by end of Q1, we'll, uh, we'll, be able to, uh, we'll be able to advise who will be the next source. We have uh, a candidate for 2020, but for 2019, we're still uh, in the process of identifying the host. Uh, finally, uh, they, we are going to announce the, the MAG member that was uh, announced in Sudan. Uh, I think uh, I will give back the floor to the uh, moderator uh, for the next one. Thank you very much. Pardon? Thank you very much, Dr. Adir, for pieces.
you. Okay, okay, welcome. Uh, just with regard to the hosting, we specifically inviting the Central African region to host. Yes. We've been in the West, we've been in the South, we have been in the uh, North, but we wanted the Central African Republic, I mean the region to, to, to somehow host. And we need also the uh, f francophones to, uh, to also um, uh, come forward. And uh, we would love to have an alternate between the different regions, the rotations and the language rotation and everything. But sometimes it just can't happen. So, so far we haven't been in, uh, uh, in Central Africa. So Central Africa is actually key. So anybody who is in that region, please assist to, to, to come to your region. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mukhtar, for valuable comments. Uh, just I want to mention the recommendations that had been <coughs> held from the last meeting. There is a very, very important recommendation of the last meeting, whom are the OTT management, which is uh, impacting negatively most of our network, mainly the voice and the national income for the, for, for the African countries. Secondly, combating the, the discriminatory access for internet. There is a discrimination access for internet in Africa that we highlighted in the last meeting. Uh, as well as to set a minimum level harmonized for African region regarding policies for internet governance. Me, myself, I, I think that these recommendations should be taken into consideration for the upcoming activities. Now, the other agenda item is Mary and McCann to speak about the MAG of African IGF for five minutes for each. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Mary Uduma from Nigeria. Uh, um, I will recall that in 2015, when we had our Africa IGF, um, a committee was established to draft the, uh, the charter for the AFIGF, and that charter was completed in 2017, presented and accepted and uh, the structure was established by the, by the uh, charter. And we have three structures. One is the a AFIGF Secretariat, who, who have been speaking, including McCann. Then we have the AFIGF MAG, then AF AFIGF NONCOM. Um, uh, first, I want to uh, say that the NONCOM and the MAG, they are volunteers. Nobody is going to pay anybody. So they are doing a pro bono work. Uh, so as is constituted, the, 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 the charter provided for non-com, and um, the composition of non-com is this. The FIGF nominating committee is composed of members from AUC, the sub-regional representatives, those are the the north, the south, the west, and the central Africa, those are the, those that coordinate, okay? And then the one African regional institution. What, what will be their role? To, to appoint 10 MAG members among candidates from all African countries for a period of two years. And their own um, tenure, the tenure of uh, a non-com is two years, and they can present themselves. And, but we'll do a rotation. The first first uh, two years, half would retire so that we will not, will not have in all new people coming in. For the Africa um, MAG, the AFIGF MAG, membership of uh, AFMAG will be drawn from individual representing relevant African government institution, <laughs> government, civil society, academia and technical community, private sector and youth. And um, the, the FIGF MAG is composed of conveners of five 
African sub-regional IGFs. So those that are convening in the North, South, West, Central Africa, and West Africa. So they are automatically members of the MAG. Then the 10 appointees by, by non-com, th those ones will serve for two years and then do another two years and um, go. Then there will be one member from designated uh, by the African Union and then one member designated by the African Regional Intergovern Intergovernmental Organization. The provision is that all AF stars will designate um, representative to the MAG, including organizations like AFICTA, uh, AFNOG, Af, Af, uh, AF, yes, you know, all of them. They should designate. So, and the role is simple. They are to do what? Manage the content of the annual AFIGF by determining the theme and the sub team after an inclusive consultation with stakeholders. Two, developing the structure and format of, of the annual meeting of the forum. So those are the major work the um, AFIGF MAG will be doing. I want to emphasize also that the Secretariat is the Secretariat of AFIGF and not the Secretariat of MAG. So MAG, the Secretariat and the MAG will be working in collaboration to make sure that we have a a strong, not only strong, a fruitful, not only a, a fruitful, a well-organized Africa IGF. The one we had last time, we, we must thank the, the Sudanese government. They did so well. And let us also, as we have been asked to bid, uh, we want the Francophonie countries to bid and host. But we have gone to the, east, to the north, we've been to the west, we've been to the south, we've been to to the east, so Central African Republic or Central African region, please come up. Cameroon, um, Chad, Congo, DRC, DRC, Ben, Guinea. eh? No, no, not Ben. Equatorial Guinea, Rwanda, South America. Rwanda is East Africa. Rwanda is East. So know know your country, know your region. Please bid and host us. Thank you. Macken will now announce the, the members of each of these structures that I've mentioned. Three structures we have, FIGF Secretariat, FIGF MAG, and FIGF NONCOM. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, for that exposure for roles and mandates for MAG. And this is very valuable for us, and we have to stick with Mr. McCann. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Good afternoon again, uh, colleagues. Uh, as uh, Mary has uh, indicated, we have the non-com members, which uh, were the five conveners of the uh, sub-regions. Uh, we had for uh, Southern Africa, George Ate from uh, SADEC. From uh, Central Africa, we had Luke Misidimbazi. Uh, he's from uh, Congo. Uh, for North Africa, we had Rida Geluz. We had uh, Rida Geluz from uh, Tunisia. For East Africa, we had Lilian Nalwoga from Uganda. For West Africa, we had Kofi Raphael from ECOWAS. For the African Union, we have Maktar Yedali. And for, for the International Go African Intergovernmental Organization, we had Maktar Sek from uh, AU, ECA. From ECA. Uh, you have seen in this composition that there are uh, the regional economic communities and people who are not from the regional economic committees. When there is a regional economic committee which is organizing a, re a regional IGF, like uh, ECOWAS, where we have West African IGF, like uh, SADEC, where we have the Southern African IGF, those uh, RECs are the conveners. But in regions where we don't have the uh, regional economic committees active in internet governance, then 
the sub-region had uh, designated one person to be the convener. That's why you have Luke from Congo, you have Lilian from Uganda, and you have uh, Rida from North Africa. So in addition to the non-com members, now I'm going to read the list of the MAG members who will, should stand up so that you are uh, recognized by the uh, participants here. Some of the, of the MAG members, I've seen them out at the door, they couldn't enter. Unfortunately, the room is too small, so they have left. But I'm going to read their name in any case. Hisham Abul Yazed Al Azhar from Egypt, his government is not here. Luc Misidimbazi Banzuzi is uh, from government, Congo. Please, Luc. <laughs> Look behind so that they can recognize you. Please. <laughs> Keith Ephraim Andere from Kenya is from the youth, he's not here. Professor Clement Zidonu from Ghana Academia, he's not here. Gamal Amin El Sayed, Government, Sudan, <laughs> the chair of this uh, meeting. So what's Sudan? After Sudan? This Sudan. After Sudan, I've not yet gone through. Okay. I'm tracking up the number of women after them. Well, oh. that is, uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Women did not uh, present, and you cannot force them to enter the group. Wherever they are presented, they have been selected. Yes. No, I'm just uh, warning you on that. <laughs> Anna Margareta Esterwezen, civil society from Southern Africa. Rida Gelouz, private sector from North Africa. Michael Elishibo, government from Southern Africa. You are what? Yeah? Yeah, but you are still the member of the, the MAC. You, you, you didn't listen what we say. Michael Ilishibo, Government of Southern Africa. Aisha Shebi, Jeridi Civil Society from Tunisia. Michel Mandela Chonang Linze, Civil Society from Cameroon. Zina Brahim Mohamed, Civil Society from Chad. Lilian Nalwaga, Civil Society from Uganda. She is not here. Kofi Raphael from ECOWAS is not here. Maktar Sek from ECA, African Intergovernmental Organization, is not here. Mary Uduma, private sector from Nigeria. And last but not least, Maktar Yedali from the African Union. <laughs> you all know. The Secretariat is Adil Suleiman. Is here, stand up Adil. So he's, he's <laughs> and myself, Mark and Fai. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McCain. Uh, the number is 17. Not members. Five women. Five <laughs> women. <laughs> Unfortunately, five women are the only one who applied for this uh, Mark member. But I have to explain because you have you have taken a fact, so I have to explain why there are five women. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Mr. McCain, for valuable information. And now we will transfer directly to questions and answers for comments, opinion, or any inquiry for the participants. And the floor is yours. If you have any question, thank you. Okay. People are uh, following online. Um, I don't want to apologize because I've actually been locked out for the whole session. So um, I just wanted to, to, to really make an appeal that um, the African Union take this forward with the um, IGF. I mean, this is a ridiculous size room for a African dialogue. Um, it's, you know, they're trying to encourage African participation and we're in this tiny room and there are big halls sitting with empty, empty. So I really urge us and not to be prevented from attending our own dialogue. Um, and I secondly just came in in time for the list of nominations, congratulations. But I strongly want to second what Nana said. We need to make far more active engagement 
There's no reason why we shouldn't have at least equal numbers and arguably more women. There are lots of competent women to take this up. So we, it's not good enough to say people aren't coming forward. We need to actively lobby to get more women on to the MAC. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love you too, and I love her too. And I love all the comments you have made. Okay. Um, yeah, I gave the women. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Koliwe Majama. I'm from Zimbabwe. I was just listening to the report, and I think there was one really good um, outcome from the f forum that wasn't mentioned, because I think some concerns were raised around uh, issues around gender representation on the panels, firstly. Second, um, there were some sexist remarks that were made by one of the speakers uh, in one of the panels that uh, saw a number of us stand up during the session in protest. But I think what came up out of that, which is really good and um, it unfortunately is not um, in the report, is that the African Union um, pledged to come up with a code of conduct that would look at issues around, you know, just representation of women on panels and just the conduct of people during the session. So I think that was um, a really good uh, outcome from the meeting. Also, just um, in terms of the diversity of panels, it would also be nice to hear what the AUC's position is on issues of, you know, just basic rights around uh, gender and sexual minorities. And I know that this is a very controversial conversation to have within the continent, but I think in terms of just diversification of the human rights agenda at the FIGF, it would be important and interesting to hear what uh, the AUC has to say. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can answer the, this question, no, 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 Dr. Adil. Okay, we can rotate. Right. Okay. I, it's a little bit hard to, to speak after two women already talk, so. So, I'll try, I'll try anyway. anyway. Uh, well, uh, culture is what remains when you forget everything. Now that the uh, African IGF is over, now that the uh, global IGF is almost over, what remains is that uh, for the future, there is a new trend, which is to probably, which prepares for a new round of thinking, a new round of negotiations about the future of internet, about the future of ICTs, and the future of humanity in general. From this point of view, I think that uh, Africa is a little bit behind what has to be done. Uh, the last time I felt that we had a real preparation for the future was the process of the, the WISIS process. And most of the people here rem remember that we had negotiations in the negotiations, and Africa had its own positions, and we, we were part of the debate. Now I'm not sure that, uh, uh, that we are preparing for something original, for th something new. We are not that much anticipating on, on the future, we should. Because uh, to, to, to get your place among the community, you have to anticipate. You have to, to, to get your old positions. Most of the ideas I am hearing now are coming from outside. We should try to have as much as possible positions on whatever problems may be, uh, may be dealt with. In, at the global level. Remember the issue of the high-level panel on digital cooperation where I, I, I have shown in Sudan, in, in Khartoum, that we had only two African in that panel. And two African who are not coming from the ICT sector. So it's too poor. And it's a little bit hard, from my side at least, to understand how we are going to get our, to make ourselves ourselves heard for the for in the future. So please, AUC, take appropriate measures 
to help having our voice heard at the global level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Sise Khan. I am the Chairman of the African Civil Society on the Information Society. Uh, it's a platform of 500 NGOs throughout the continent working on these issues uh, for uh, nearly 15 years now. Uh, I really congratulate the teams working on this process. It was long, but uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, there is now a team responding on the issues of ICT uh, in Africa at a global level. And uh, uh, I really also commend the reader's comment uh, because uh, for in my point of view, we have failed to implement the VCs outcomes. Africa is still uh, around 20% of internet connection. We don't have a global leadership on the ICT issues. And the, issue, the issues of the higher level digital cooperation, it was just uh, a club of friends. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry to, to say that, but we were not consulted. We just uh, heard about it. And uh, we are still struggling for uh, the digital linguistic diversity. Uh, the money coming from the ITCT sectors is still going out of Africa. And we don't have a strong leadership. While people uh, in Europe, in Asia, are taxing uh, uh, t t telcos and companies, we are just struggling country by country. But I'm happy that now we have a good leadership from the African Union. And for now, for three years now, we are calling for a Pan-African Digital Summit because some problems we cannot deal with at a national level. We need a strong Pan-African leadership. And I see in this room many, many, many great competencies on these issues. We have to strategize. And I'm very happy to have everybody here in this room. And I commend the work of, uh, under the leadership of Maktar and all the team. But we still have a long way to go. And be ensured that the African Civil Society is with you. And I congratulate all people that have been elected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we have uh, five minutes left for uh, the room. So we have to answer the questions. <laughs> so much. We have seven minutes only. We will not answer the questions. There is another session from four <coughs> o'clock up to five here. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I think two more. Thank you, party members who lobbied for me. Um, I have two comments, Mr. Chair, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. My name is Nenna. I come from the internet. Uh, two things. On, uh, on the high-level panel, I think it's stated there that individuals serve on their personal capacity, and it is very important. I know the two ladies who are here, and I can assure you that they, are, they may not be in the IGF crowd. They may not be the IGF crowd, but they are squarely in the tech world. One is an SME and one is an advocate. Um, but then we have ample opportunity to work on the content. And that is where I think influence is. Um, I've met with the, the HLP members on different occasions. And I can tell you, you know, we all know here that content is king. So if we want to sit down and draft content, then we are sure to influence whatever process it is. My second uh, submission at this time is that originally we had agreed, correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, you've been around from the time I was convening uh, West Africa IGF and later on to Africa IGF, that we could use the opportunity of the Africa IGF to, to have proactive measures in Africa. Uh, we did discuss that with Chengatai and Co. There was no restriction for us as Africans taking concrete decisions at a continental level and going ahead and implementing them during our own IGF. It's only the global IGF that we cannot bind others to decisions. So we can have it, I mean, the Europeans do it and do it as Eurodig. That why can't we have the Africa Digital Week as part of, instead of an Africa IGF? So that's something I'm flying off you. The other thing is, 
um, every year we come, we have the same discussion, we have a declaration and we walk away. When are we going to start a State of Africa Internet report that traces these things we have agreed to and um, have gone away? And then we can, over the years, map ourselves and say, in this year we decided this, have we done that? I, I, I do recall in West Africa we said we are going to make, put an end to, to Internet shutdowns. Have, have these decisions gone up to our capitals? Have we transmitted them? Are we going to keep to them? So, summary, sir, we have great opportunity to model this for ourselves, content-wise, action-wise, and monitor ourselves. And my, my proposal at this moment is, have, is to have an annual um, State of Internet in Africa report to be presented at that session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Such a valuable comments. Dr. Mukhtar can answer this question. And also Dr. Adif. Okay. Uh, so on the genders uh, issue, uh, I think we, uh, in terms of the panels and, and even attendance, uh, in Khartoum, unfortunately, we have uh, many uh, female panelists declining. So we had them, and then last week they declined, and uh, and that's why we, we, the the panels, unlike Egypt, they were not uh, gender balanced. And uh, I think we strive to for for gender balance. As you could see in. Uh, uh, we had uh, in Egypt, we had gender balance, even in terms of attendance in Egypt was 50-50 almost. And, uh, and we also want to have youth in the panels as well. So we, we will try to achieve this goal. Uh, we have it in mind. Uh, the incident that uh, took place in Khartoum, uh, which is, was a uh, uh, sexist remark, uh, we, uh, as uh, Corey said, that we are trying to have a code of conduct and people would uh, accept that we will abide by the code of conduct. Otherwise, they would not be invited to the meeting. Uh, this is the first uh, incident uh, that we have during the African year for, for the last maybe seven or eight years, but it's a good uh, reminder that we should keep uh, a certain code of conduct. Uh, not only on the for, for the panelists, even for also people attending and making comments, they have to uh, abide by certain uh, rules. Uh, uh, so we are in the meeting. Well, it's a technical meeting. It's a policy discussion meeting. No need to offend anyone. Um, uh, Rida Galuz, I think, uh, were, and, and think the rest of the comments uh, we are couldn't we couldn't agree more. I think they are pertinent, and uh, I think we've been struggling to kind of uh, follow a different track from the global IGF. We need to see some concrete results coming out of our IGF. And uh, some of the recommendations that the African Union is responsible for, for which we can, uh, can be held responsible for, we can track, we can see what happens on them. But then for the other recommendations are like for civil society, for other players, businesses, we don't have control over. Hopefully that the leaders on the, in those sectors, they will take uh, the recommendations seriously and try to act on them. But uh, in terms of the African unions, I think we are trying to follow most of the recommendation and you could see some concrete results, uh, you know, coming out of that. Uh, I think I stop at that. I think I give the floor to Mokhtar maybe to add. His comments. Thank you, Adil. Um, well, my answer will be actually uh, on the on two. Um, first of all, I will start by a small one: the shutdowns. Uh, the shutdowns we have, uh, frankly speaking, dared to do something that never been done before, which is actually really g bring the ministers around the table and speak about the shutdowns. Uh, we have done it three times. We have done it also for the diplomats. Uh, it's it's. Uh, the conclusion I personally would draw to the, from that is um, there is no really uh, a specific intention to shut down really. It's because people don't know what kind of uh, 
solution they do to address a specific matter on my security and uh, most of our leadership don't understand how to address that. So uh, education here is very important for them to understand that there is many options to address specific security matter without really shutting down internet everywhere. So this is ongoing process. <coughs> um, on the issue of binding decision, I ag again agree with you that we don't have to do like any, anyone else. We do our own things, and uh, I don't think that there is anywhere somebody who uh, had a head of state adopting a declaration on IG and digital economy somewhere else in the world. Uh, France, oh, the France just did, but that we did it before France. And guys, you have to know that we have a lot of things that we are doing that other people did not do. For instance, the African Union, uh, the, the continent, the only, only continent that have a cybersecurity convention on uh, cyber, cyber security and uh, personal data protection, guidelines on personal data protections. Uh, it's unique in the world, by the way. We are the only ones specifically we do have that declaration adopted by a summit of head of states on the general principle of internal governance. So this is something positive you have to talk about rather than just saying leadership. I agree with you that the leadership need to be threatened everywhere. We have uh, uh, good leaders here and there, but generally speaking, the leadership within the ICT sector is actually had uh, meeting a lot of challenges because most of our leadership just, just don't understand the matter of ICT. They just don't understand. Is it because they are reluctant about it or something? But most of them I spoke with, most of the time is, they think, oh, the telephone works very well, the internet connectivity works very well, that's enough. Or it's fine, but that's not ICT. But again, the good thing is there is no reluctancy, there is no opposition, there is no negative reaction to that. It's just they don't understand what to do. And that's why probably we have to come with uh, innovative solutions, innovative proposals. Uh, but having done that, once we do that, we shouldn't stop there because the problem now is put our own resources. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the perception again is still within our leadership that the private sector is doing well in uh, providing connectivity, mobile phone, internet, and all the resources will be put for uh, food security, for uh, Ebola things, for, uh, uh, I mean, they have peace and security issues everywhere. Those priorities make them really uh, turning their uh, kind of say back to uh, on ICT matters. But again, personally, I don't see any opposition. It's just lack of means. We don't have resources. These programs, we are most of the 99% of the programs we are starting and implementing, including Axis, uh, PRIDA, all of that, is being funded by partners. Well, if you face this kind of situation, then you've got a problem. That is the biggest problem. Our member states still don't put resources on things. Uh, then that's the challenge, uh, the challenge of the team, the challenge of the commission, the challenge of the member state. The reforms, I can, uh, on Saturday, there will be extraordinary summit of the head of state. They will be talking about reforms. One of the things is that s at least 70% of the budget or uh, programs that uh, the AUC uh, or the AU should implement should be funded by the member state, not by the partners. Yeah. Will that go through? We will see on Sunday what is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, there is a new reform of AUC whereby probably the entire Department of Infrastructure okay. and Energy and ICT may disappear somewhere else. So, so there, there, well, yes, this is uh, challenges. I probably to next month I will not have a job, so you, you never know. So those things are happening, but you have to be ready for it and have alternatives. And uh, But again, I couldn't agree more that we need stronger leadership, more educated leadership, and have our own initiatives. And uh, what I can say, the team I, and I will be ready to listen. And we have proven that most of the time when you bring something from this informal kind of setting, we bring it to formal settings and make it approved and adopted. Uh, not every time we, s we don't succeed every time, but we hope that we will be uh, having better rates in the future. So that's all I can say at this point of time. But um, again, we are uh, at your service and we will be glad to listen to anything. And specifically when you make a proposal, uh, well, we think about what kind of resources we need to put behind it. <coughs> that's the challenge. I like the uh, idea of having our 
state actually report. We actually take a, we have taken a decision in 2008 to have an annual report on the status of ICT in Africa every year. But unfortunately, we could never done one, simply because there is no resources, no competition for that. I think we are being kicked out of the, from the room. We exceed Again. our time. Huh? We exceed our yes. time by seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We still have seven minutes. No, no, we have exceeded. Oh, exceeded, exceeded, yeah. Oh, thank you. You okay, just concluded. Okay. Yes. okay, finally, I allow me to thank all of you for that appreciative discussion and fruitful <laughs> outcomes and declaring close of session. Thank you very much. <laughs>